Another area that is common in FOP patients is hearing impairment. With over 50% of those with FOP having some form of difficulty in hearing. Yes, um, hearing impairment is quite common in, in FOP. And uh, what's so interesting is that um, because it's so common, it's likely to be related to the genetic, uh, the, to the gene a mutation that causes FOP. This is something that uh, Eileen and I are, are very, very well aware of uh, and will be looking for very closely in, in the animal models that we're making um, for FOP. We don't exactly know why that occurs, although there's some evidence uh, some scanty evidence that there may be fusion of the small bones in the ear. Uh, we think of bones as supporting our body, important in movement, of course, and protecting our brain and our, and our chest wall. But, uh, and, in, and of course, the inside of many bones makes the, makes the blood. That's where the bone marrow is. Mm -hmm. But another function of bone is uh, as a vibrational mechanism uh, in, our, in our middle ear uh, to allow us to hear. And uh, there is some evidence that the that the vibration of those three little bones in the middle ear don't vibrate quite as well in FOP as they do in others, and that, in fact, there may be some bony bridges there that shouldn't be there that impair hearing. Uh, with the animal models that, uh, uh, that are being made, we and our colleagues and collaborators around the world should be able to, uh, should be able to sort this out and, uh, and figure out why that's a problem. From a practical standpoint, uh, it's very important that children, uh, the children's hearing be tested from time to time. I don't have an absolute recommendation to be done every year, but from time to time. Mm -hmm. And it's especially important because one of the other features of FOP is neck stiffness very early on in, in life because the vertebra are often uh, fused at an early age in, in children who have FOP. And if children can't turn their head well, they can't look up, they can't look down, they can't look to the left and right as, as another child would, um, this could be dangerous, especially when crossing a street. So hearing is important in the classroom, but it's also important in protecting us from injury and in, in hearing where danger is coming from. So it's quite important, especially because of the, the, the mobility impairment right. that children's hearing be tested and that they have uh, audiology uh, evaluations from time to time. Occasionally in the more severe situations, children might need hearing aids. Uh, they're, the, uh, the technology now, the nanotechnology for hearing aids is, right. is unbelievable and uh, cosmetically it's, it's not what it used to be uh, and not the problem uh, it used to be and children tolerate this well um, and can function better in school. I often, uh, I often tell the parents that the hearing needs to be evaluated so that if the child does have a hearing impairment and they, are, they don't need a hearing aid, they may at least be moved to the front of the classroom. Right. so that they can keep up with the, with the uh, studies.